Hey guys, it's Pete for Tween Wave, coming back again to do another vinyl finds, some CD finds too, and those have been piling up even more than the records lately. But it's been about, I think, a week and a half since the last video, and in that time period, somehow I managed to end up with like a huge stack. A couple, of, there's been a couple trips to Amoeba and what some thrift stores and some other places had some records, so got a whole bunch so I'm just gonna get right into it or else I'll completely run out of time so really quick this is what's playing in the background now it's quiet but it'll get louder it's EST some good jazz here these all came into the, the Goodwill it's a nice little stack actually there's more that I'm gonna show you but I'll just show you the highlights EST stands for the Esbjorn Svensson trio it's a really good piano jazz Piano bass drum. Um, I think it's from Sweden. Definitely one of the Scandinavian countries. Some really good compositions on here. This is from like 2003. If you're curious about recent jazz, I would say get this. It even comes with. Um, how about that glare there? Ooh. It even comes with. Actually, what does it come with? Oh, a bonus DVD, which I haven't even watched yet, so that's cool coming out which is not so cool moving right along here's some more actually this is another piano trio this is the bad plus I like these guys too not as much as EST my friend Patrick loves the bad plus they actually I actually saw them when they came to Yoshi's not too long ago and they were really good this one's called give I think it's their second or third CD and the thing with the bad plus is they always um, do some covers of tunes that you wouldn't think would work as jazz arrangements like They've done Heart of Glass by Blondie in the past. This this one has Valoria by the Pixies and Iron Man by Black Sabbath, so that's kind of cool. Here's a group that I've just never checked out. I'm finally glad I have some stuff by them. Mineski, Martin, and Wood. I like these guys a lot. This one's called The Dropper. It's another trio. These guys are electric. Here's an earlier one called Shack Man. And here's another one called Friday Afternoon in the Universe. Ooh, look at that glare. Also, uh, these came into um, one of the stores I, I go to in Concord, because one, one of my jobs is there. So when I was there last week, I picked up some really cheap CDs. This was like a dollar. This is American football, some emo stuff before emo became really horrible. And this is one of my, well, I really like this a lot. This is Bark Psychosis Hex. This, I don't know if you can see the cover there but that is a beautiful cover really nice uh, post rock is basically what you'd call it so there's the CDs now onto the records um, some of these I haven't even listened to yet some of them I have and I want to comment on some of them because some of them just completely blew me away but it's a race against the clock so here they are in chronological order first things first this is Phil Oaks this one's called All the News That's Fit to Sing I think it's his first record. Um, I had another one by him a long time ago. I actually didn't really like it because it was kind of, it was called Pleasures of the Harbor or Pleasures from the Harbor. The arrangements were kind of weird. This one I haven't listened to yet, so I don't know how good it's going to be. An early copy, it's not original original because it's the tan label. An original copy would have this label right here, I do believe. But yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's clean. It's got some ring wear, but other than that, good. Here's another one that actually turned up, this was a thrift store find, and I'm embarrassed to say I, I don't have anything else by these guys, or this this one guy I should say, and it's a pretty big, I, I'm missing a, a lot, because it's a pretty good catalog before this guy passed away. T-Rex, this is A Beard of Stars is the name of it, and it's actually, actually this is Tyrannosaurus Rex, this is before they he shortened the name. It's a nice gatefold here. It's actually just two guys. It's these two guys here. Mark Bolin and Mickey Finn is the other guy. They're doing um, really sort of, there's, let's see, guitar, organ, bass, uh, clay drums, tabla, bass, and finger cymbals. So it's kind of a, it's, it's cool. I liked it. No, no band though, just two guys. This next one is Xenakis. Electroacoustic music. This is some 
hard to deal with stuff if you're not paying attention. Um, I actually had some uh, Zanakis on my iTunes, and I I gave it some listens, and it was sort of not... I didn't really understand what was going on. Thanks to this, there's some really good liner notes. Normally, I don't pay too much attention, but these, these actually came in really handy. Um, I finally sort of get where he's, he's coming from when he's making this music. Um, not sure where even... It's sort of music concrete, but it's... There's mathematical operations involved, so it's be, it's not quite as random. Basically, this is really far out stuff. This is just so far beyond what I normally listen to that I can't help but I'm just I'm playing this all the time. It's fantastic. The song uh, Bohor, he originally wrote it in 1962. Terrified me. It's absolutely terrifying, and really really good. I can't rec. Loved it. Can't recommend it <clears throat> enough. This next one is an upgrade, uh, it's Sly and the Family Stone. I actually already had this, but this is such a clean copy that I just had to pick it up. My old copy was kind of the cover was had some serious ring wear, and the uh, record had, some, had a few scratches on it. But this copy, so this is one of the cleanest records I've ever seen uh, from 1973. And it's also my favorite Sly in the Family Stone record. Love one of the funkiest things that's ever been recorded, probably. Um, what else can I say about this? Oh yeah, this one turned up in a pile of uh, country records. I don't know how it ended up there. Someone had sold off all their country music in this random thrift store, and right in the middle was that Sly in the Family. So I picked, just picked that one up and left all the commercial country behind. Moving right along, here's Paul Blay. Here's more for the ECM thread. This is a solo piano. Uh, record's really clean. There's some ring wear on here, as you can see. There's also a stupid uh, corner cut here. But um, this was pretty good. Here was a dollar record that, uh, actually these next two are really, really common, but I just never bothered to have them, so came across some clean copies, picked them up. This is Joni Mitchell. Uh, Hissing of, what is this? The Hissing of Summer Lawns, and I've got a bunch of her records, just never had that one before. Um, I listened to one side, it sounded pretty good, starting to go more jazzy, so that, and this is, this is Boston, um, some really popular, what else, I don't even know what you'd call, other than just rock, ra radio friendly rock, haven't listened to it, but pretty much every song was a radio hit. I think I recognize pretty much every, probably like seven or eight of these songs I'm gonna be familiar with. Here's one I just never had before, but I have pretty much every other record by him. David Bowie Heroes. Really, really nice copy here. Well, actually no. Tiny bit of ring wear here, but other than that it's clean. And this is one of the, one of his better ones. Part of that Berlin trilogy with um, Eno. Robert Fripp's on here too, so even better. Here's some disco. This is Chic. Uh, this, what is this one called? Risqué. And this one has uh, Good Times. Pretty good. I listened to, it, listened to it once, have to listen to it again to really connect with it, but I thought that one was good. Here's one I liked a lot. This is The Damned. Uh, what is this one called? Oh, this is the Black Album. This one came out uh, in the UK as a double album, and then here it was only a single album, so I'm kind of missing, like, half the record, but it's uh, it's an original copy. Uh, this is the IRS label, this is the original, what IRS originally looked like. A little rainbow banner there, which is cool. This one doesn't, let me get back inside. Moving right along, here's some, uh, one thrift store I went to actually turned up a few um, Brazilian records, and I picked this one up because I didn't have this one. I really like this guy. This is uh, João Gilberto. Uh, the album is called Brazil. It's from 1981. And if you can see the other names on here, Caetano Veloso's on here. Who else? Gilberto Gil and uh, Maria Batania. Really, really good. It's only six songs, and it's like 28 minutes long, so it's really good. Anyway, João Gilberto's Bossa Nova, one of the best in the in the genre. Really, I love his guitar playing and I love his singing. So, 
check that out if you don't have any Bossa Nova, because it's really good. Here's Jimi Hendrix. This is the Hendrix Concerts. Some all live recordings, and I don't think any of these were released beforehand. And even afterward, I don't know where all this stuff... A lot of this stuff came from uh, Winterland, October 1968. And then there's a couple other dates here. There's some stuff from May 1969, July 1970. Really good, really good record here. Here's some, here's a really, this is a really great record. This is the Cocteau Twins. This one's called Treasure, 1984. This one I actually did have on CD. Uh, I decided to just, it was only $4, so I had to pick this up. Because I really, really like the Cocteau Twins. It's a really cool you call it ethereal wave dream pop would be a good description this is uh the cover here actually canadian pressing and um sounds great really good 4ad stuff that would be a good uh topic for another thread if it hasn't been done 4ad records because there's a lot of them here's one i haven't listened to yet it's uh marillion misplaced childhood covers cool at the very least nice little rainbow Nice, uh, nice clouds. I did check out one of the songs on YouTube. I was kind of uh, horrified because it's like neo prog. But I mean, I'll give it a chance at some point, maybe tonight. Here's more Brazilian stuff. Astor Piazzolla is my guy. I showed the uh, Tango Zero Hour record not too long ago. This one is almost a, this this guy. You know, it's the same type of thing. This is a live album called. Uh, might have been Ween, Wen, Vien, maybe. It came out a couple years before uh, Tango Zero Hour, but it's the same type of, you know, composing and arrangements. Really, really love this guy. I can't, I can't recommend this this one enough either. Here's more '80s stuff. Sisters of Mercy. This one was also pretty cheap. It was like four dollars. This is, I think, their second album, Floodland, Goth. Good goth, check it out. Here's a cool one. Um, I listened to one side of this and I was enjoying it. It's the Last Emperor soundtrack. It's got, I'm gonna butcher this name, but it's the uh, guy from Yellow Magic Orchestra, Ryuchi Sakamoto, and the guy from The Talking Heads, David Byrne. I think it's, they, they're, they're not collaborating together though. It's like some tracks by Sakamoto and then some tracks by David Byrne. Also Kong Su, who I don't know anything about. And another soundtrack, The Untouchables, Ennio Morricone, Morricone, so I'm gonna, here's a guy that I'm just gonna pick up anything I can find by, because I love his composing. He's got about 400 films to his credit, probably more, probably more like five or six hundred. He's ridiculous. Moving right along, here is uh, The Dog-Faced Hermans. If you, this is a really, really cool record. Uh, it's been reissued, I think, by Alternative Tentacles. Um, it came out in like 1994 is the release date here. And it's sort of a weird avant-garde punk rock. Really, really cool record. I was really, really enjoying it. Can't recommend it enough. Check it out if you're interested in some weird stuff that's also really punk rock. And then these two were both in a thrift store, and what was strange is that these were very recent records, so someone must have bought these and decided they didn't want them. Here's not their best record, but it's decent. It's The Strokes, First Impressions of Earth, uh, in really, really good condition, and there's a couple good songs on here, so I'm probably gonna keep this. If anyone really, really is dying to have a copy of this, though, let me know, and we can work out a trade. Last but not least, Robert Pollard, Normal Happiness. He's the guy from Guided by Voices. Really, really prolific guy. He's probably got like 3,000 songs out by now. This is one of his solo albums after Guided by Voices broke up, and it's pretty good. It's pretty solid. I've got some other stuff by him. I can't really keep track of this guy now. He's just got too many projects. Way too much stuff going on. But yeah, check out Guided by Voices if you haven't. All right, so that's it. That's the huge pile of records. Um, Thanks for watching, and thanks for commenting, and subscribing, and it's always a lot of fun sharing these things, so take it easy, guys, and I'll see you guys later.